Welcome to this module of computer aided power system analysis. In the last few lectures, we have discussed about the formation of the Y bus matrix, where there can be a case that there is no mutual coupling among any of the elements or B, there can be some mutual coupling between two of the elements. Now, today we would be talking about this power flow equation, basic power flow equation as well as the classification of buses. So, let us start. So, what we are trying to do is that how to analyze a general N bus M machine power system. So, now suppose that there are N buses in the system, N buses in the system, N bus system and there can be some mutual coupling between any of the two elements that is also equally possible, but then even then whether there is any mutual coupling or not, we know that any system can be represented in terms of its bus admittance matrix. So, then therefore, we define that. So, then we say that if there are injected currents at buses are I 1, I 2 and I n, please note that these currents are injected currents at bus at all the buses, then V 1, V 2, V i, V n. So, here I i is injected current at bus i for all i 1 to n V i voltage at bus i for all i is equal to 1 to n and this would be y 1 1, this would be y 1 2, this would be y 1 i, y 1 n. these are all complex quantities. So, there is an n cross n matrix as we have already seen and we also know that this is also a symmetric matrix. So, this is n cross 1 vector, this is also n cross 1 vector and this is also n cross n matrix and we write that y i j is i j th element of the we write is y bus matrix this is for all i j so from here we can write down that i i is y i 1 v 1 plus y i 2 v 2 plus dot 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 y i i v i plus y i n v n 
all these are complex quantity. So, we can write it down in second form k is equal to 1 to n y i k v k. Now, because all these are complex quantities, so then let v i is equal to v i angle theta i v k is equal to magnitude v k and angle theta k and y i k is magnitude y i k angle let us alpha i k because these are all complex quantities. Now, we know S i that is the ejected complex power at bus i is equal to P i plus j q i that is, is equal to V i into i i star. We have already discussed in some previous class why do we take this operation i i star, i i star is nothing but the complex conjugate of the current i i. So, it would be V i then y i k v k k is equal to 1 to n whole of it star. So, therefore, it would be v i v k star y i k star k is equal to 1 to n. So, then therefore, it would be now because this i is common to all. So, I can take it as k is equal to 1 to n v i v k star y i k star. So, we can write it down as k is equal to 1 to n v i v k y i k angle theta i minus theta k minus alpha i k. By substituting v k star from here as well as y k star from here. So, then therefore, taking the real and imaginary component of this, we can write down P i is equal to k is equal to 1 to n v i v k y i k cos theta i minus theta k minus alpha i k and q i is equal to k is equal to 1 to n v i v k y i k sin theta i minus theta k minus alpha i. So, these two equations p i and q i they do relate the complex injected power at any bus with the bus voltage magnitudes and angle of all the other buses. So, then therefore, so we again write, so then therefore, these two equations we again write for just repeat it just for the sake of clarity V i V k Y i k cos theta i minus theta k minus alpha i k q i is equal to k is equal to 1 to n v i v k y i k sin theta i minus theta k minus alpha i k. Remember v i v k y i k are nothing but the magnitudes of the bus voltages as well as the element of the bus admittance matrix respectively.
So, these two equations are known as the power flow equations. Now, at every bus i we can write down this equation and 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 here because we do have total n number of buses. So, then i varies from 1 to to n. So, then therefore, there are all together to n power flow equations. Because you see at each and every bus i we do have these two equation p i and q i and now we have got a total of n number of buses. So, then therefore, you have got total number of equations which is equal to 2 n. Now, let us see at each and every bus what are the electrical quantities which we would like to know. So, at each and every bus we would like to know the following electrical quantities. So, at every bus we would like to know following quantities V i that is the magnitude, angle, injected real power, injected reactive power. So, then therefore, at every bus, so there are total 4 quantities. So, then therefore, we would like to know total for n number of quantities to completely define our power system. So, then therefore, all together there are 4 n number 4 n quantities. which we would like to know or which are actually necessary for completely defining the power system. So, now what we have? We have essentially there are altogether number of quantities is 4 n which we would like to know, but we have got only 2 n equations. So, then here obviously, my number of unknown is certainly just the twice that of the number of equations. So, then obviously, we cannot solve for all these 4 quantities. So, out of this 4 n number of quantities, we have to pre specify 2 n number of quantities. So, that the remaining 2 n number of quantities can be solved by solving these 2 n number of equations. So, then we write. So, we have got total number of equations. So, we have got total number of equations is 2 n, but total number of quantities is 4 n. So, then therefore, we have no other choice, but to pre specify 2 n number of quantities such that we can calculate the remaining 2 n number of quantities by solving this 2 n number of power flow equations. So, what we have? So, we have to specify. So, therefore, we have to specify to n number of
Now, here what we have? We have got total n number of buses and we have just now argued that we have to specify 2n number of quantities. So, then therefore, it makes a lot of sense that we would like to pre-specify pre 2 quantities per bus. If so, so then therefore, if we can do that, so in that case we would be able to pre-specify 2n number of quantities very easily. Now, depending upon the physical situation, we do define different quantities of different types of buses. So, then therefore, for the purpose of pre-specifying the electrical quantities at different buses, we first really classify the buses into three categories depending upon their physical characteristics as well as the requirement of our calculation. So, now let us look at the concept of classification of buses. So, what we have we actually do define <coughs> now when we have some bus. So, then what we have we have got at some bus either we have some load or some generator connected in shunt or or maybe that there is nothing connected in shunt. Now, if there is any load connected at any bus, so then therefore, we know that at that particular bus what is the total amount of loads. For example, if I say at bus 10 the load is 10 megawatt and 5 ampere. So, then in that case we know that my injected real power would be minus 10 megawatt and my injected reactive power would be minus 5 MVR. So, then therefore, at each and every load bus we would be able to pre-specify what is the value of injected power. So, then therefore, our first type of bus which we can very very easily classify is we call it that P Q buses. PQ buses means that at these buses PI and QI are specified. That means, if at any particular bus there is some load connected, so then in that case the injected PI and QI would be nothing but the negative of the actual load connected at these buses or if at any bus there is nothing connected neither load or a generator in that case we will simply say that at this bus my injected P as well as the injected Q would be 0. Even then we would be able to specify the value of P i and Q i at these buses after all 0 is also a known quantity. So, then therefore, at these buses where we are able to specify the P i and Q i, we do call them this P Q buses. Those buses are essentially the load buses and also those buses are the intermediate buses which are simply used to connect two or more different transmission lines without any shunt element connected to these buses. Then we have other buses at which there are generator connected. So, at these buses where there are generator connected, we call them as P V buses. Now, why do we call them P V buses? Now, when we say that we call them P V buses, so here we actually specify P i that is the injected real power and the voltage magnitude are specified. Now, the question is 
what is the physical justification of specifying T i and V i. Assume that there is a bus, let us say bus uh, J and at this bus there is a generator connected, some generator connected and let us say that, that this generator is supplying say 500 megawatt power. So, then therefore, so then therefore, at this buses what is the actual value of injected power that is basically nothing but 500 megawatt. So, then therefore, we know what is the value of P i because we know that what is the amount of real power this particular generator is injecting into the bus. So, then therefore, at this bus where there is any generator connected we can pre specify the injected real power. But then what is the physical justification of specifying this voltage magnitude. Now, here we all know that each and every generator is also equipped with something called excitation system, excitation system each and every generator is also equipped with something called excitation systems. This excitation systems maintains the voltage magnitude at this bus by suitably changing the field current inside the generator. So, then therefore, because we do have an excitation systems at each and every bus or, or rather at each and every generator. So, then therefore, any generator is capable of maintaining the bus voltage at its terminal <coughs> at a particular pre specified value. Of course, any generator cannot maintain the voltage magnitude at its terminal at any value because after all any excitation system has got certain limits because it really cannot produce infinite values of the field current. So, then therefore, depending upon the maximum or minimum amount of field current which can be produced by the excitation systems, a generator can maintain the voltage at its terminal within a certain zone, but when within that particular certain zone any generator is able to maintain its voltage at its terminal at a particular value. So, then therefore, under steady state condition because of the action of the excitation system we can always safely say that the voltage magnitude of the generator bus is known. So, then therefore, we can pre specify this particular voltage magnitude at this bus. For example, in this case we can perhaps say perhaps say that this generator is maintaining this particular bus voltage at let us say 1.01 .01 per unit. So, then therefore, for this particular generator the value of V i that is the specified value of voltage magnitude is 1.01 .01 per unit because this excitation system is able to maintain this voltage magnitude at 1.01 .01 per unit. Now, there is also there is something called a slag bus. Now, let us understand the need of this slag bus. So, we are talking about slag bus. If we go at this, now here if we look at this P q bus as well as the P v bus. So, then what we are saying that at this P q bus P and Q i are specified. So, then therefore, we have to calculate V i and V i and theta i. And also for the PV bus we are pre specifying P i and V i and so then therefore, we have to calculate Q i and theta i. So, then therefore, so I write here specified calculated and type of bus. So, for P q bus the specified quantities are P i q i and calculated quantities are V i theta i and for P v bus 
specified quantities are V i, V i and P i and the calculated quantities are Q i, theta i. So, now you can see we have to calculate theta i. Now, the question is when we are calculating any angle there has to be some reference. For example, if I have a vector like this some vector, if I take the reference as this line, so then with respect to this reference this vector may have an angle of 30 degree. But now, if I do change my reference like this, so then therefore, with respect to this reference 1, let us say this is reference 1, this is reference 2. So, then therefore, with respect to this reference, this same vector which has not even budged in this space, which has not really moved at all in this space, but because we have just now changed this reference. So, then this, this, this same vector with respect to this reference may now make an angle of say 60 degrees. So, then therefore, we can very easily see that whenever we are trying to calculate a current, there has to be some reference because without any reference the calculation uh, sorry. Uh, so, uh, essentially without any reference the calculation of angle does not make any sense because depending upon the reference the calculated value of angle will change. So, then therefore, whenever we are calculating the angle at all the buses we have to make one angle as the reference angle that is the 0 angle. So, then therefore, there has to be one bus at which we will pre specify that the angle of this bus voltage would be made 0 and all the other angles either it is of the voltage or current would be calculated with respect to this particular reference angle. So, then therefore, this particular bus at which we make the angle to be equal to 0, we call it as a slag bus. So, at slag bus we make we also specify theta i, but we simply specify it to be equal to 0. Now, physically what is actually a slag bus? Physically slag bus is basically also an generator bus. So, then therefore, physically at this particular slag bus also there is one generator is connected. So, then therefore, the question comes if there is already generator connected why cannot we pre specify the P i at this bus also as we have done for the for the other generators. The answer is as follows. Suppose, I do have a very simple system say there are 3. So, let us say there is so, this is bus 1, this is bus 2, this is bus 3 and there are two lines connected and at bus 2 there is a load of let us say 100 megawatt and let us say at bus 1 and bus 3 there are two generator connected and let us say bus 3 is producing 50 megawatt. So, then therefore, what should be the value of generator at bus 1? Apparently, it appears that it also should produce 50 megawatts such that this 50 plus this 50 should be equal to 100, but that is not so because, because of this flow of the current from here and here there would be power losses. So, then therefore, this generation plus this generation should be equal to this load plus this losses. Now, the problem is what is the value of losses? If we know this value of losses a priori, so then in that case we could have possibly pre specified the amount of generation at this bus. For example, if we knew that this total amount of losses in this line as well as in this line is let us say 5 megawatt. So, then therefore, you could have said well if this generator is generating 50 megawatt. So, in this case this generator would be generating 55 megawatt. So, in that case this generation plus this generation is 
would be equal to so 50 plus 55 would be equal to load plus loss this this is perfectly fine but unfortunately we do not know what is the value of current flowing through this because this value of current would be again dependent on the value of the voltage at bus 1 bus 2 and bus 3 so then therefore until and unless we are able to calculate the value of voltage both magnitude and angle at bus 1 bus 2 and bus 3 so then therefore we would just not be able to calculate the value of current and because we would not be able to calculate the value of current, we would not be able to calculate the value of loss occurring in these two lines a priori. So then therefore, if we have to calculate the value of losses, we have to first calculate the value of voltages at the three buses, but we are trying to calculate the value of voltages at these three buses actually in this case. So, then therefore, we are actually back to square 1 and because we have not been able to calculate the value of voltages, it is just not possible for us to pre-specify the value of losses occurring in the system. So, then therefore, we really cannot pre-specify the generation at all the generators in the system. We have to make free one generator and at this particular generator we will not pre specify the value of real power injection it would be actually calculated such that the total generation comprising of this generator and the other generators would be equal to the total load in the system plus the total loss in the system so then therefore if there is one generator at which we cannot pre specify the injected real power. So, then what other quantity we can specify? Now, we have already seen that that at all the other buses <coughs> we have already specified two quantities each, but here in the case of slag bus we have only just now pre specified only one quanti quantity, but here we have to now therefore we have to now also pre specify another quantity so now what that quantity can be now please note because this is a generator this generator is also equipped with an excitation system and because this generator is equipped with an excitation system so then therefore this generator is also capable of maintaining the terminal voltage at its terminal at a particular value so then therefore as we have done for the other generators for this generator also it is possible for us to pre specify the voltage magnitude. So, then therefore, for this slag bus we also pre specify the voltage magnitude. So, then therefore, for a slag bus we do pre specify V i and theta i, theta i would be 0 and we calculate P i and Q i. So, now let us take a very small example, suppose we have um, a 5 bus system and there are say this is the connection. This interconnection is not important because whatever is the interconnection that would be captured in the bus admittance matrix. So, we are not worried about this interconnection. So, let us say there is a 5 bus system and in this 5 bus system there are 3 generators at bus 1 and let us say at bus 4 and let us say at bus 3 and bus 2 there is some load and bus 5 also there is some load. Uh, for the purpose of more clarity uh, let us add another bus does not matter let us say this is bus 6 
let us say this is bus 6 and, and, and bus 6 there is nothing connected. So, we have got a 6 bus system bus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 at bus 1, 4 and uh, 3 there are generators connected and bus 2 and 5 there are some physical load connected. So, there is some load connected P L 2, Q L 2, there is some load connected P L 5, Q L 5 and at bus 6 there is nothing connected. So, then for this case what are my P Q buses? My P Q buses are bus 2, bus 5 and bus 6. For bus 2, my P2 is equal to minus PL2 and my Q2 is actually equal to minus QL2. For bus 5, P5 is equal to minus PL5 and Q5 is equal to minus QL5 and for bus 6, because there is nothing connected here. So, then therefore, P 6 would be equal to 0, Q 6 would be Q 6 also would be equal to 0, but even then. So, then therefore, in so then therefore, in this case bus 2, bus 5 and bus 6 are the P Q buses. So, here P Q buses are bus 2, bus 5 and bus 6 and my P V buses are let us say bus 3 and bus 4. My P V buses are bus 3 and bus 4, these are basically the generator buses. So, at this P 3 what would be the value of P i? P i would be nothing but the equal to P g i. What would be the value of V i? V i is basically nothing but the value of the voltage at which this terminal voltage is maintained by the excitation system, this value is known to us. And also bus 4 the same thing, the value of P i is equal to P g 4 and the value of V 4 is essentially nothing but the value of terminal voltage at which the excitation system of this generator is maintaining <coughs> this particular voltage magnitude. And bus 1 we do specify so and also my slack bus is bus 1. At this bus we do maintain theta 1 is equal to 0 and we do also pre specify V 1 and this V 1 is nothing but the voltage at which this terminal voltage is maintained by the excitation system of this particular generator. So, then therefore, depending upon the physical condition and also for the purpose of calculation, we do classify all the buses of any general power system into three categories which are called P Q bus, P V bus as well as the slack bus. So, with this classification we are now ready to start our actual calculation procedure of for calculating these quantities. So, now our task is to calculate these quantities for each and every bus. So, for all this P Q bus I have to calculate V i and theta i, for all this P V bus I have to calculate Q i and theta i and for slack bus I have to calculate P i and Q i. Now, if we look at this power flow equations, we know that if we know V i and theta i at each and every bus, I would be able to calculate P i and Q i. So, then therefore, our essentially our objective is to calculate the voltage magnitude and angle at all the buses by utilizing these power flow equations. So, how these are done, we would be looking into from the next lectures. Thank you.